This video is on human nutrition, otherwise referred to as digestion, and the aim of this video is to make this topic very straightforward. Sometimes this very simple topic gets overcomplicated, so we're going to make it simple. We're going to learn the basics first, and to do that, we use lots of good diagrams. We draw them and we label them, and then when you have the basics, then you move on and you add detail. What is digestion and why is it needed? Digestion is the physical and chemical breakdown of food. So you remember that food is made up of those biomolecules, carbohydrates, proteins and lipids, for example. And we need to break down those large molecules into smaller, more soluble subunits or particles that are small enough to pass into the blood and then on into cells. Why is this so important? Well, food is needed for energy. Remember, glucose is needed for respiration in the mitochondria of the cells. And also food is acting as a source of raw materials for growth and repair and to build new chemicals. What is meant by physical and chemical breakdown of food? So what does physical mean? Well, physical breakdown of food starts at your mouth. It's the crushing and the grinding action of your teeth, crushing the food and turning it with the help of your tongue into a ball known as a bolus. And you have a certain number of very particular types of teeth. And this is known as your dental formula. And there's a separate video on that. So your teeth, with the help of your tongue, are going to crush and grind the food into a ball known as a bolus. And know as well that another Another name for your mouth is the oral cavity or the buccal cavity. Physical digestion also takes place in your stomach, the walls of which are muscular and so they can squeeze and churn the food. The food spends many hours in the stomach and this churning action helps with physical digestion. The chemical breakdown of food or chemical digestion is all about the action of enzymes. We know that enzymes are called biological catalysts and they speed up the breakdown of these particular substrate molecules into smaller molecules. But the enzymes themselves are not changed or used up in the reaction. So enzymes are hugely important in chemical digestion. So when we think about it, digestion is really just telling the story of what happens when we eat something, for example, like this cheeseburger. We know that it contains all of those biomolecules and in digestion, those carbohydrates are going to be physically and chemically broken down to eventually end up as monosaccharides, for example, glucose. The proteins are eventually going to be broken down into amino acids and the lipids are eventually going to be broken down into fatty acids and glycerol. Digestion takes place in the alimentary canal. It's this long continuous tube that begins with your mouth and ends with your anus. So at the top would be the mouth, which I haven't drawn in, but then you have the esophagus, which leads into the stomach, which leads into the small intestine, which in turn leads into the large intestine, and that leads into the rectum and finally out through the anus. So this is all the alimentary canal or your digestive system. Digestion commences in the mouth. It's here that the food is physically digested because your teeth are going to crush, tear and grind the food with the help of your tongue into a bolus. But there is also chemical digestion happening in your mouth because amylase is produced, salivary amylase is produced, and this is going to act on the starch in the bread or the carbohydrates and convert it or break it down into maltose. The food leaves your mouth and enters into the esophagus and it is shunted forward so it moves down through the esophagus. The bolus of food moves down because of waves of muscular contraction. So the esophageal wall contains smooth muscle and it can contract or squeeze and this is known as peristalsis and it moves the ball or the bolus of food down towards the stomach. So it's important to note that as the food or the bolus of food was being pushed or shunted by peristalsis down to the esophagus, the enzyme amylase was still active. It was still working on the starch, breaking it down into maltose. However, once the bolus enters into the stomach, because of the highly acidic conditions, the low pH between 1 and 2, amylase becomes denatured and so is no longer active. There is both physical and chemical digestion taking place in the stomach. So the stomach churns the food, that's physical digestion. But cells lining the stomach produce various substances. For example, one type of cell produces hydrochloric acid. Then other cells produce pepsinogen. It is an inactive form of a protease, an enzyme that breaks down proteins. And also other cells produce mucus. Mucus is very important because it prevents the stomach from being digested by this enzyme, this protease. So there's an important enzyme in the stomach, produced in the stomach, it's pepsin. Pepsin is the active form. However, it's secreted in an inactive form, pepsinogen. And when pepsinogen is secreted into the lumen or the centre of the stomach and mixes with the hydrochloric acid, it then gets converted into the active form, pepsin. 
pepsin breaks down proteins, large polypeptides, into smaller polypeptides. So after a number of hours, this liquid substance leaves the stomach and it's called chyme. So this highly acidic chyme leaves the stomach and enters into the small intestine. It is in the small intestine that secretions from the pancreas and the liver act on this chyme. So the pancreas produces pancreatic enzymes and also sodium hydrogen carbonate, which is going to neutralize that chyme. And the liver produces bile, which gets sent to the gallbladder and eventually makes its way to the small intestine where it too acts on the chyme. The acidic chyme left the stomach and entered the small intestine. It's here that it was acted upon by enzymes made in the pancreas but secreted in the small intestine. So these enzymes are pancreatic amylase, lipase and protease. So carbohydrates, lipids and proteins are going to be chemically digested in the small intestine. The pancreas also produced sodium hydrogen carbonate which neutralises the acidic chyme. The liver produces bile and it's very important to note that there are no enzymes in bile. Bile is sent to the gallbladder where it is stored and concentrated and from the gallbladder it is then secreted into the small intestine. Bile emulsifies fats so it changes large droplets of fats, it converts them into many smaller droplets which makes it easier for lipases to act upon and to break them down. The small intestine is very long and it can be split into two sections. The upper portion is the duodenum. It's here where most digestion takes place. The lower section is known as the ileum and it's here where the digested food materials are absorbed into the bloodstream. The final stages of digestion, this takes place in the upper portion of the small intestine and it's completed by enzymes which are produced by cells lining the intestinal wall. So at the end of digestion, the carbohydrates are now monosaccharides, the lipids are fatty acids and glycerol, and the proteins are amino acids. Digestion is now complete and we have ended up with the products of digestion, which are monosaccharides, fatty acids and glycerol, and those amino acids. We'll also have ended up with vitamins and minerals and water. So we're now in the lower portion of the small intestine, the ileum, and it's here that absorption takes place. This is where those products of digestion leave the small intestine and pass into the bloodstream. So when you look inside the small intestine, it's covered in these finger-like projections called villi. And there are many of them. This is one singular villus. And remember, the products of digestion are going to pass through the walls of individual villi and into the blood supply. So let's look at one villus and see how its structure helps with absorption. Well, firstly, each villus is very thin walled. It has a good blood supply because remember the products of carbohydrate digestion, the monosaccharides and the products of protein digestion, the amino acids, they're going to pass directly into that blood supply at the center of each villus. Also, each villus has a lymphatic vessel, a lacteal, a blind ending vessel, and it's into this that the products of fat digestion, the fatty acids and glycerol will pass. Eventually, they'll reach the blood supply of the subclavian veins at the base of the neck. So they'll rejoin the blood supply up there. The cells that cover each villus, they themselves have their own little infoldings called microvilli and they further increase the surface area for absorption. And the fact that there are so many villi in the first place, they're so numerous, is another major benefit because it further increases the surface area for absorption. So the small intestine is really well suited to its role of absorption and it's particularly because of the presence of these villi. So how does absorption actually take place? Well, it involves diffusion and active transport. So when we leave the small intestine, the only material that enters into the large intestine, which is next, is that which has been undigested or unabsorbed. One important process that does take place in the large intestine or the colon is the reabsorption of water. So water is reabsorbed and the material then that continues to pass through the large intestine is faeces and this eventually gets expelled through the anus. So that's a very basic outline on digestion. So remember, it's really important that you yourself are doing the exam questions. That's the only way to find those tricky questions, the questions that you don't really have a grasp on yet. So do the exam questions, write your own notes, use your textbook and the very best of luck.